Why is it that I use Canon cameras as a pro photographer? Let's break this down a bit. Now, I, I've been a pro for 15 years, or actually more because I've been saying 15 years for quite a while, but I've been an avid Canon shooter, and there are reasons for this, but the reasons have changed through the years. So what I'm gonna give you here is the reason why I use Canon, which Canon I used, as well as how much I was averagely charging at that point in my career. So I think that's a, a good relative thing to know there. Now, first of all, I'm not a Canon fanboy, um, but there are reasons why I've, I've stuck with Canon and the reason has changed. Now, back in the beginning, back in the very beginning, I had a Canon 450D that my uncle gave me. Uh, so he gave me, he lent it to me for a very long period of time. I think I've returned it. I hope I've returned it. Should probably check I've returned it. Canon 450D, pretty good camera. First digital camera I ever owned. It was great. Put your little SD card in. I bought the battery grip so it looked more pro. I had a 28mm 2.8 and a 50mm 1.8 and a little speed light. I was set to go. My professional career started there. Charging about 50 quid a shoot, you know? And I mean, the images are pretty bad. They probably weren't the 50 quid. But the reason I started with Canon was because I was given a Canon body to borrow. I bought the lenses, got cracking on my career. I doubt I can find an image from back then because obviously my backing up skills were as bad as my photographic skills. But backups aside, did the job, got the pictures. I shot in JPEG to start with because I didn't understand how to open a RAW file. So if you're sitting there going, oh my word, I don't even know how to edit raw files, don't worry. I now have all of this stuff going on and I, I just shot JPEG and I edited it in Flickr's online gallery and downloaded it again. That's where I started. Um, now, up until that point, I shot film and I scanned it and edited it properly, but that was my first digital foray. Um, very exciting times, very good. 50 quid a shoot and it wasn't even a bargain for the person paying for it. Next up, the early years of pro photography. This is the point where I started getting a bit more money, probably charging 200 pounds a shoot. And I had a Canon 50D. And the reason I bought the Canon 50D is because, two reasons, two reasons here. One is I'd already got some Canon lenses and it, it doesn't make sense to swap them out and change brand. It's very expensive. I mean, I know we're talking about 200 pounds of lenses, but I was poor. I was living in a shop, not a shop. I was living above a shop. The shop was growing something it shouldn't have been growing. The rent was dirt cheap. I was literally skint. So that's what I bought. It cost me 400 pounds, I think. It was very expensive for me at the time. I saved, I scrimped, I got my money together and I bought that camera and I bought a zoom lens. I bought an 18 to 35 2.8 Sigma. Now this camera here actually still lives on. My mother has it, she uses it for her e-commerce shot. Shot, shop, it's got about 400,000 shutter actuations on it. If you'd like to see me do a shoot on that camera, let me know in the comments below, I'll get it and I'll show you that I can make an image from that 50D look as good as anything I've got in here today. But I digress. The second reason I bought it was I started being a second shooter at weddings. Now the photographer I worked with was a guy called Hits. A uh, good friend, good guy, taught me almost everything I know about shooting outside of a studio. Like, if it's not in a studio and I know how to do it, he taught me it. Um, Off-camera flash, bounce flash, direct flash, events, weddings, portraits, the lot. He taught me that. And he shot with a Canon 5D Mark II system back then. It was brand new. And the 50D had the same settings, layouts, buttons as the 5D Mark II. So when I went to shoot for him, he gave me a 5D Mark II. I used that camera and it worked like mine. So it made life very easy for me. And that's where I was then. I think I was charging him like 200 pounds a day second shooting for him, which is great. No kit, no cards, just turn up, get a camera, take the pictures, give it all back, have a beer, go to bed. Fun times, enjoyed those years, great years of my career. Then I became the jobbing pro. This is when I started really working on myself. I wasn't just second shooting and doing small jobs. I'd started doing bigger jobs. I was charging maybe 500 pounds a day to 750 pounds a day. It was that kind of day rate. I had the 5D Mark II full frame camera system. Now at the time, that was the newest non-pro full frame camera. The 5D Mark III hadn't come out yet, um, but they were coming down in price. They were 1200 pounds each second hand and I bought three of them. Big spendy purchase for me that was. Um, that was probably the most money I'd ever spent in one go on anything at that point in my life. I'd got a studio. I was shooting portraits, small adverts for local businesses, food photography, band, I was doing everything. You know that jobbing local pro. Need a photograph, I'm your guy. Loving it, great times in my life. Not always that great, but less great than the previous times. Still great times, fun times. 
made some good friends, still talk to a lot of them today, went to music festivals, went touring with big bands, shot for magazines, did all the cool stuff, which doesn't really pay that much money. Um, had the 20 millimeter prime, 28, 35, 50, 85, 135 prime lenses, 17 to 40, 24 to 70, 72 to 200. Still got the original one today. Look at this bad boy. This has seen a hard life. This here, I've had, this has made me many, many tens of thousands of pounds. Great bit of kit, bomb proof. Does rattle today, didn't back then. The lens has gone a bit not ideal, but it all works. Very good bit of kit. Now, the reason I went for that, again, was because I'd already got lenses, kind of, not really, though, because one of those lenses was crop sensor, the 51.8, obviously. I went to take a picture one day, and the focus motor kept moving, and then it just unscrewed itself, and the lens fell out. Just a barrel on the camera body. Um, but I was already in with the Canon system. I was shooting a lot with Hitesh still. I was doing a lot of second shooting with him, probably 20 times a summer. Um, so it helped having the same camera bodies. I was already familiar with the camera body. I didn't know anyone who shot a different brand. Everybody I knew shot Canon. And this is important. This was one of the key reasons why I bought into this at this point. Everyone I knew shot Canon. If I needed to borrow a fourth camera body, if I needed to borrow a second 24 to 70 lens, I could ask a mate. Didn't have to go to a rental shop because I was skinned. I could borrow it from a friend, rent it from a friend and just save money that way. And that's very important. The second reason I went for these, and this was more why I stuck with the 5D Mark II system, not really went for it, but stuck with it, was because I got into tilt shift lenses. And Canon tilt shift lenses are extremely good and extremely affordable. And that was a key reason why I didn't change brand. Now, by the time the 5D Mark III came out, I was pretty much set in as a studio photographer. Granted, I was a portrait one, but I was a studio one, so there was no real need for me to upgrade that camera. So I kept these 5D Mark IIs up until the release of the 5D SR, which is what I use still today, seven years on, the Canon 5D SR. Now, at the time of buying it, there was a slight chance I was gonna buy a phase one. Um, I had a lot of chats with Kev down at the Flash Center. We tested some phase ones. But I found that, and this was before the XF body was anywhere near affordable, but I found that with the phase one, it just failed all the time. I remember vividly being on a big job in Paris. Big money job, big money job, big stress, very much not anywhere near my studio. And the phase one just stopped working. Just stopped. Had to take all the batteries out, the internal batteries out, factory reset it, put it all back together again, take some shots for a while, and then the next day, stops. And it just drove me insane. I was like, well, yeah, the image quality is for sure better, but it didn't work. Um, now, the XF body by phase one, that's brilliant. It's purely functional, does a great job. Would definitely have bought that if I could have afforded it, but I couldn't. So at the time, the 5DSR was the best camera I could afford. Stuck with Canon because I still had the lenses. I did go and buy some slightly more sexy lenses like this, the Zeiss Milvus Macro Planar. This is a beautiful bit of kit. Full metal, metal lens hood. Lovely. And that's what I was shooting with. I was shooting with that lens and the 5D SR. And then the tilt shift lenses. But I started to come into problems while I was still having to focus stack with my tilt shift lenses. Now at this point here, I was regularly doing shoots above 10 grand for myself per day before production costs. So the money was coming in, but I needed something bigger. So I bought myself a couple of Mamiya RZ lenses for like 500 crown, pa, crowns, 500 pounds each, two 500 pound lenses, a 50 and a 90 millimeter. That is what I use today, still use it today. The 50 and the 90 millimeter lens on my Canberra Actress with a 5D SR or a 5D S on the back. I've got three of these bodies now. I think I've got two 5D SRs and a 5D S or the other way around, can't quite remember. One definitely doesn't worry, worry. Some, Two of them sometimes do more, but very rarely. The 5DSR is definitely sharper, it's definitely better, but it's worth having a 5DS as backup just in case. And these camera bodies are brilliant. They're jobbing camera bodies. Um, they've all hit over 150,000 shutter actuations now. I sometimes use them for behind the scenes time lapses if I want to do some cool edit and post with punch-ins and stuff for clients, for stop motions, for stills work. Anything which is a test shoot, we use these for. Now I'm gonna to get to what I'm using for the big jobs in a minute, but alongside that, I shoot film. And I know what you're thinking, I'm a color digital photographer, she's bold and graphic work, 
But we have these Canons as well. These are what I use for black and white film. I love black and white film. And, and this is a side note, but important. Just because you shoot something else doesn't mean it should be in your portfolio. I love doing this. I love going down the dark room and printing them. I've got the Canon F1, fully mechanical. You could literally knock someone out with this. It is a brass brick and has a waist level viewfinder. Lovely to use. And then I've got a Canon with a 40 millimeter 1.7 rangefinder. It's like a poor man's Leica. Can't really afford a Leica. At least I can't justify affording one anyway. But there we go. That's what I'm using alongside it. Now, for the big shoots, we use a phase one. Phase one XF, 150 megapixel back, often the 120 millimeter blue ring F4 lens or the 80 millimeter 2.8 blue ring lens. That's what we use for the big jobs. They have built-in focus stacking. Now, when we have a really big job and I need the tilt shift movements as well, which is not always, it's very rare that an advert needs that nowadays because of the styling um, of, of what they want. But when we do, we rent a Cambo with a digital back and a digital lens on it. Uh, great bit of care. I'm going to do a video on one of those things. We've got one coming into the studio. It is literally like you can buy a house for the same amount of money that this camera costs. You've probably never seen it or heard of it, but it is, it is a beautiful bit of kit. I'm going to make sure we get that in here and I can show you it all. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see with that camera because, oh, it's good. I, whatever you want to know, let me know. I will let you know. It'll be a good time. Will I always be with Canon? No, absolutely not. There's no reason why I've got brand loyalty. I have no brand loyalty to Canon. If anything, a lot of what they do really annoys me, but I have no brand loyalty. It's just that at the moment, there's no camera better than the 5DSR within that sort of price range. Until you're spending phase one money, I just don't see the upgrade. Yes, I could get a, a, a Fuji 50 megapixel. It's a bigger sensor, slightly better pixel density, same resolution, about the same price. Could go for the 100 megapixel, bit more resolution, better bit depth. But then if I get that, will my Mamiya lenses resolve enough detail that I don't have to also buy new lenses? And I'll also have to buy a new back for my Cambo to put the thing on. That's another two grand. So we've got what? So we're buying it all secondhand and I need new lenses. Probably 15,000 pounds in for one camera setup to be replaced. I need a backup, so 20,000 pounds. Not really going to see a return on that. So I'm not going to make any more money by buying it. The money I make today is kind of the limit of what the market will bear. Buying better cameras won't fix that. It's not going to push me up to the next level. But of course, all the time, used prices come down. And much like a car, I will only ever buy a secondhand camera. Because once you take it out of the shop, you've just lost a huge percentage of money. And when it's a really expensive camera, you've just spent 10 grand, you literally lose 2,000 pounds walking out of a door. And I'm not into that. I'm, I'm very tight and frugal. I say frugal, tight seems a bit... A bit demeaning. I'm very frugal. So that's not for me. But the Fuji XF with 100 megapixel back is coming down in price just massively. An 80 megapixel back costs the same as a brand new Canon camera right now. So yeah, th there's things I'm thinking about. There's things I'm looking at. And I certainly don't have any brand loyalty to Canon. But I will not buy a camera just because it's better. There needs to be more to it for that. For me, there needs to be more in it. There needs to be more going on there. Let me know your thoughts on this. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.